Good morning. Welcome to worship at Waldensian Presbyterian Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. It is good to be gathered here. Uh, the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. It's good to be here. If you're guests this morning, we want to especially welcome you. Um, we hope that you experience the grace of God here, the welcome of this congregation. Today is a combined uh, worship Sunday for World Communion Sunday. Uh, it's good to have both worshiping communities here together. Uh, if you haven't already done so, I want to encourage all of us to pass the attendance pad uh, down the pew. Um, just to note that we're here today. If you are a guest and you're comfortable sharing information about contacting you, uh, please do so. We'll be glad to respond to you and share information about uh, the church and its ministries. Uh, and if there's anything specific you'd like to know, please let us know on the pew pad. Just a couple of reminders. Uh, please take note of all the things happening in, your, uh, in the list in your bulletin this morning. But uh, we have started our stewardship emphasis for the year. Uh, you may have received something in the mail already from the stewardship committee. Uh, we'll conclude that on October 22nd, which will be Commitment Sunday. This week is uh, Wednesday night dinner week, so we encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, you can sign up by contacting the church office. Uh, I think the menu is in the bulletin this, uh, this morning. Also, uh, Jet Set uh, meets this week. We encourage you to be a part of that if you haven't come before. Another opportunity to share a good meal together um, and visit with folks. We will be uh, reinstating the prayer partner exchange in two weeks. That happens on the 15th. So uh, if you've been a part of that, it's a very meaningful opportunity to pray for one another. I encourage you to uh, participate in that. And since we are um, sharing in communion this morning, there will not be a prayer of the people. So I want to encourage you to take note of the prayer list uh, in the bulletin this morning to keep folks in your prayers today and throughout the week. At this time, I want to invite us as we're able to stand and share the peace of Christ with one another.
Let's join together in our call to worship. Our world is so divided, fragmented by anger and hate. Lord, draw us together at the table of our Lord. our wounds and build bridges of help and hope for all people. Lord, Lord meet us at the table and feed us with your healing words. Lord, call us together to feast on your mercy and goodness. Nourish us with words of peace, that we may go into the world with love and compassion for all your people. Hear the word of the Lord from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. It's now time for our children's sermon. I'd like to invite the children to please come to the front. Any of the children that are sitting in the pews, you can come join us as well if you'd like. We're just going to sit right here today, so y'all can sit right here on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> How's everybody this morning? Good. Good. What's all this behind you? What's all this on this table? Does anybody know? <coughs> food. Yep, that's right. It's food. What kind of food is it? There's bread. What else is up there? Grapes. Does anybody have a guess of what's in the trays that have the lids on them? 
Yes. Food. Yep, more food. What's in there? Do you know? More dishes? No, no. What, what else? Since there's all kinds of other food on the table, what might be in those? More, more food, that's right. Yep. In the little trays, there's more bread. In the big trays, there's juice and wine. So why do we, why do we have all this out here today? Does anybody know? It's a new mug. It's a new mug? It is a new mug, yeah. And some churches do this the first of every month, so you're close, yeah. It's World Communion Sunday. I know that's kind of a big phrase, um, but what we're, what we're going to think about is how all the people that it took to bring this up here. Did you know somebody made some of this bread? And somebody put the baskets together. Who brought the baskets up today? Yeah. Some of the youth, some of the youth brought the baskets up this morning, right? And somebody made prepared the cups with juice, and somebody cut up the bread. This type. And somebody brought the grapes, that's right. So many people came together to make this meal happen. And today, we think of that in a special way because people all over the world in churches are doing the same thing. And this table reminds us of a lot of things, but one thing it, that it reminds us of is that we work together. We're sort of one in Jesus Christ. He makes us a family, a community, brings us together. And it took a lot of people to do this. And in a little while in the service, Everybody's going to eat this food as part of worship today, all right? Everybody is invited to the table, yep. Everybody who loves Jesus, yep, that's right, yep. So let's have a prayer together, and I want to invite you to repeat after me, okay? Dear God, we thank you today for all you provide, bread to eat and juice and wine to drink. And most of all, for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, we know that we all make mistakes. We ignore what God calls us to do in loving our neighbor. We also know that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Let us in freedom now confess the wrong we have done. We're invited to join now together in the prayer of confession, followed by a moment of silent confession. Let us pray. God of mercy, your love has never been far from us. Even when we turn our backs on seek our own comfort and neglect opportunities to help others, when we by our thoughts and actions betray you, you are always with us. Forgive us for all those acts of cowardice and self-centeredness that have drawn us away from you. Fill our spirits and rebuild our lives. You have placed us in a global community in which illness, oppression, Amen. While it is true we have sinned, it is a greater truth that we are forgiven through God's love in Jesus Christ. In Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Spirit of truth, open to us the scriptures, speaking your holy word, and meeting us in the living Christ. Amen. This morning on World Communion Sunday, we are reading a text from Acts, and I want to invite our readers to go ahead and come forward. And so we're reading from different languages today. Uh, we'll be reading um, English, German, French, Spanish, Italian, and American Sign Language will also be used. So I invite you to find a pew Bible if you don't have one so that you can follow along, um, because unless you know all these languages, maybe somebody does, you might get lost. Um, so our text uh, comes from the book of Acts, we're reading from the second chapter, verses 42 through 47. And you'll, there will be a brief pause between either readers or, if, uh, or with a particular reader that's reading two languages so that you'll know where we are as we read through the scripture. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Es kam alle Zählen Furcht an und geschahen viel Wunder und Zeichen durch die Apostel. Tous ceux qui croyaient étaient dans le même lieu et ils avaient tout en commun. Vendían sus propiedades y todo lo que tenían y repartían el dinero según las necesidades de cada uno. Y tutti i giorni, y siendo de pali consentimiento a su vida, a tempio y rompendo y pani nelle case. Prendevano en oro cibo asieme con leticia y simplicita ti cuore. Praising God and having the goodwill of all the people, and day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I hope you were following along. It was one of those, this is one of those stories in the New Testament where there's a little chaos and confusion and some people knew what was going on and some didn't. I hope you feel like you're uh, connected with what's happening. I want to invite us to think a little bit about food this morning and maybe what we had for breakfast. Maybe some of us had a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit and a cup of coffee or two from McDonald's. Uh, maybe others of us had a smoothie or maybe a bowl of cereal. Some like to have toast or a bagel and maybe yogurt or fruit this morning. Anybody have any of those? You don't have to raise your hand, but if you did, right? Okay. How many of us eat what we had this morning regularly? How many of us have a short list of our daily options? Maybe some of us have a morning food ritual. Coffee, then breakfast. Maybe a certain kind of juice every morning with breakfast. breakfast. We also likely have some feelings that are associated with our morning breakfast ritual. Does it make, it make you feel good inside to just to think about breakfast this morning? Do those moments of sipping hot coffee or tea bring feelings of relaxation even now? Maybe some of us want to go back to the kitchen and do it again. Many of us have morning rituals and routines that are mostly unconscious. We do things a certain way because it's comfortable. My routine is to have some coffee outside on the porch, weather permitting, shower, then eat cereal with fruit. And I follow the same order 90% of the time. And I have about three breakfast options that I scroll through in the mornings. My wife and I, Kat, Kathy, and I also have a routine that whoever gets up first makes the pour over coffee for both of us. And 
whoever gets up second makes the bed. I also usually read my morning email devotion, uh, either while I'm drinking my coffee or sometimes while I eat. Most morning food rituals are uh, ones in which we're not really expecting anything other than getting it done in a timely way, maybe saving money by eating at home, uh, making sure that our loved ones are eating healthy, uh, or just making sure we, we get out in the time that we need to get out. And what many of us have in our morning rituals is mostly unconscious. It's not always a deep experience. We do it by rote, and occasionally we change it up so that we don't get bored. And the opposite is also true for other rituals in our lives. There are rituals in our lives that give birth to and sustain deep meaning. Some of us may have a special place where that happens now and then, in our house or on our porch or in our yard where we sit and find rest and peace. Some of us have a favorite place that we go each week to have a meal with people that we care about. Others of us have regular travel destinations at the beach or the mountains that hold a lot of memories. And those places create anticipation and longing and rest just thinking about them. We do well to reflect on the meaningful rituals in our lives. One Christian writer has said that in our culture today we're tempted to become ritually tone deaf. The lure of rational explanation, the desire to control everything, and the fear of the unknown keeps us suspicious of things that we cannot explain. We also know today that ancient cultures knew better. They valued the power and deep meaning of conscious rituals and rites of passage. For them, the rites of healing, blessing and acknowledging courage and maturity were part of both personal growth and strength as well as communal and cultural maturity. Our Christian faith is similar. Some scholars conclude that our tone deafness likely began uh, in the mid-1600s with John Locke and other Enlightenment thinkers. Their interest in promoting science and intellectual exchange was good. It influenced Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson. It impacted politics and scientific advancement and even Christian theology and practice. Until recently, even Christian practices that are intended to be deeply moving and healing and community building and transforming have taken a back seat. Fortunately, in the last few decades, many Christian writers have also begun to note a rediscovery of the deep meaning and power of ritual growing in our own culture and even in Christianity. And today on this World Communion Sunday, we're stepping deeply into one of them, the ritual of the Lord's table, the sharing of bread and cup. Our scripture this morning from the book of Acts gives us some things to ponder as we listen for God today in this deep ritual. The book of Acts is the story of the early, emerging early Christian community we can almost picture the scene that we read about. It's crisp and clear. It's new and filled with life. Those early believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. And great things happened. God was at work. Lives were changed. We read that people practiced sacrificial love. They worshiped often. They had glad and generous hearts. God was at work. They were learning together, loving one another, eating and praying. It was not a perfect community. Things did change over time. But this story offers us a well-rounded view of the deep ritual practice from our very beginnings. If we had to flesh it out in today's terms, we would say their learning was reflection on the gospel message and how to apply it to life. The fellowship was the feeling of togetherness that led to acts of compassion and sacrificial love. There was a uniting and sending power given by the Holy Spirit. The breaking bread for them was probably a whole meal. It not, had not developed into communion as we know it today. Yet it was a sacred time that reminded them of things like Jesus eating with tax collectors and sinners. And it offered them hope that one day there would be a banquet prepared by God for all who would come. And the prayer part was likely a continuation of Jewish daily prayer practice, modeled on Jesus and his emphasis on 
and practice of prayer. One of the best phrases I've read about what ritual is is this. Ritual does something for us that we cannot do for ourselves. Ritual does something for us that we cannot do for ourselves. Years ago, um, uh, there's an, an interesting example of ritual came about, and it, I received it through my children. Um, they were reading the Hunger Games books. came out in 2012. Did anybody read those? You know that story? My kids wanted me to read it with them, and I couldn't put them down. Um, the story is filled with powerful scenes of ritual. The setting is a world that has survived a great war, and as punishment for a rebellion against the powers that be, the current corrupt government creates a slave nation, each, forcing each of 12 districts to participate in a lottery in, when, in which a teenage boy or girl is chosen to join in battle. The battle is called the games and it's televised to the whole country. The idea is to keep the districts in fear and under control so that they continue to produce goods and services for the wealthy, advanced capital and the people there. In one scene, the main character, whose name is Katniss, witnesses the death of a small girl named Rue, and it reminds Katniss of her sister. Even though Rue is sort of the enemy in the game, she's from a different district, Katniss takes the time to sing to little Rue and cover her with flowers. It's a moving ritual of respect and opposition to the brutality and the injustice of the games. And to top it all off, as, the Katniss, as Katniss walks away, she offers a a symbol to the cameras, and all the people who were watching in silence offer the signal back. Katniss has no idea of the power, the deep meaning, and the impact of that ritual and that symbol. And in the story, it changed everything. Rituals do what words cannot do. Intentional acts of kindness are like that. When we act, something happens. There's an exchange. The person we help senses it, and we too may feel some deep impact. We cannot predict, control, explain, or make it happen exactly the same way again. Church youth retreats and mission trips are like that. Rituals of get to know you games on the first night, rituals of meal prayers, evenings around the campfire, and working together have deep impact. Rituals of talking into the night in cabins are unpredictable. But the participants know the power of those rituals and they long to go back to Montreat or Camp Greer or the next mission trip. Words cannot adequately explain the experience. Adult treats like, uh, retreats are like that. Family weeks at the beach can be like that. Worship is sometimes like that. The ritual has impact and we want it to happen again. Our practices in worship give birth to and nurture faith in us, shaping us as the church. As one Christian writer has said, in an age when it is so difficult to sustain faith and community, there can be no better advice than that of Jesus himself, to gather around the word of God and break bread together. We do not even have to fully understand what we're doing. We just have to we don't even have to be brilliant or imaginative or stimulating. We just have to gather around the table in his name, around simple, clear rituals that he gave us, and he will do the rest. And this morning we do that. We bring all our senses to bear on bread and cup. To hunger and thirst is universal, and in this bread and cup, we acknowledge our hunger and our thirst for God. Here at this table, we ask God to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. This is deep ritual. We don't have to hype it up to get everyone excited. No smoke, no lights, no mirrors are needed. Ritual is something we can't scientifically quantify, reproduce, or control. God is at work here. There's no rational explanation as to its power. Here something happens between us and God, and something happens among us by grace that is healing, transforming, and unifying. 
A man who was a recovering alcoholic once told his pastor why he went to regularly to AA meetings. He said, I know and I know for sure that if I don't go to meetings regularly, I'll begin to drink again. He said, it's funny, the meetings are always the same. The same things get said over and over and over again. It's totally predictable, he said. I know everything that's going to be said and everybody that goes knows everything that's going to be said. He said, but I go and I don't go just to be a nice person. I go there to stay alive and it works. Here at this table, we do the same thing over and over and over. And we say mostly the same words and the same grace of God gives us life. Life we celebrate and participate in, life that comes from God. Life given and lived in Jesus Christ who died and was raised. Life that is born in us through the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to invite us this morning to consciously enter this deep ritual by taking our time. When we take the bread, I invite us to hold it in silence for just a moment, or you can take it back to your seat if you'd like and eat it there. And when we take it, we're invited to take the time to get in touch with the gladness in our hearts for God and for God's love and all that God has done for us. When it's time, we can also take just a moment and hold the cup in silence, open to what God can do in us that we cannot do for ourselves, to shape us, forgive us, unite us in Christian community, and give us hope. Thanks be to God for this deep ritual that feeds and fills us, that empowers us to, in turn, share what has sustained us, helping us so that by grace we can also feed, fill, and help sustain the world. Amen. Friends, we're invited now to stand as we're able and join in the affirmation of faith that you'll find printed in your bulletin. We believe that Christ's work of reconciliation is made manifest in the church as a community of believers who have been reconciled with God and with one another. That unity is, therefore, both a gift and an obligation for the church of Jesus Christ. That through the working of God's Spirit, it is a binding force, yet simultaneously a reality which must be earnestly pursued and sought, one which the people of God must be continually built up to attain, that the variety of spiritual gifts, opportunities, backgrounds, convictions, as well as the various languages and cultures, are by virtue of the reconciliation in Christ, opportunities for mutual service and enrichment within the one visible Please be seated. In these moments now, as we receive the offering, we're invited to consider our blessings and how we might be a blessing to others. Let us with gladness present the offerings of our life and our labor to the Lord.
let us pray. Giver of life, receive all that we offer you this day. Let the spirit you bestow on your church continue to work in the world through the hearts of all who believe. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. In a few moments, we'll be invited to come forward for communion. Uh, there will be ushers at the back that will release us from the back. Uh, so we'll start with the back rows, and you're invited to come down the center aisle. There'll be a station on each side, and then you can return to your seats from the sides. Um, if you're not able or not comfortable walking forward, if you just you can slightly raise your hand, we'll have service also in the back who will come and serve you where you are. 
There are also small trash cans to the side for your cups uh, if you need those as well. Friends, this is Christ's table. He's the one who invites us to come. The table is all open to all who love him and call him Lord. This morning we affirm that some eat flat leavened bread. Uh, some eat Italian bread with egg white uh, brushed on the top while it's baked. Some eat French bread with egg in the recipe. And some like white bread. Common, a lot of people eat that. Bread is a common food that sustains us, no matter where we live in the world. We also give thanks today for grapes that uh, come from the ground and uh, that make juice and wine that fortifies us and gives us joy. We give thanks today for these gifts of God, for the people of God. Please join me now in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Creator God, show forth among us the presence of your life giving word and Holy Spirit to sanctify us and your whole church through this sacrament. As the grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, mm -hmm. and as these grapes from many hills come into one cup, Grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Friends, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus was with the disciples eating, and after he gave thanks, he broke the bread. Saying to them, this is my body, which is for you. And on that same night, in like manner, Jesus took the cup saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sin. And he said, As often as you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me.
Let us pray. We bless you, O God, for gifts of bread and cup, for sustaining us in hope every day of our lives. We pray for your strength to prepare us now for your service as we offer to you lives of witness and worship in the world you have made. To Christ our Lord. Amen. faith living in the love and abundant mercy of God let us go from this place and serve as we have been loved and cared for by God and may the grace of God enable us to be faithful in all things amen mm -hmm. 